moving forward, we will move to Onkar Kapoor, please. CEO of CETAC Renewable Energy. So first of all, I want to thank EQ. They have given me opportunity to talk to you. And uh, basically, we are at where all our uh, panel, few panel already told that we are at the cusp of the issues where from first gear, second gear, we have reached to this place. But now we need the sustainability. And sustainability need from all stakeholders. When I am saying sustainability, sustainability need from the government, say they are saying one lakh megawatt solar power and another 60,000 wind they need. So what is their plan to year year basis? Because what is happening from what, how I observe this bidding, it is sometime not rational. Why? Because in 15 days, what happened? The tariff came from 330 to 244. So one number is irrational. Because in one month time, this world has not changed, either from technology point of view, or from tax point of view, or from lenders point of view. So what? Either 330 was not rational, or 244 was not. So, it need the rationality from the IPP also, because the 25 year PPA we are signing already a few of the uh, speakers already told. I want to put the first 25 year warranty in this world put by the Siemens in 1997. And that first guarantee we had to see because 70 plus 320 years only happened. It is not 25 years. That time, the production was low, very close quality control was there. Now when we are producing in the world 70 gigawatt per year. So I'm not saying we are out of quality control or quality conscious, but we have to see how the things are going and how it will work. Because when we are bidding for 25 years, Rest assured, what you are putting in assumption after putting the plant, it will be only negative. Because so many things we are not taking in risk evaluation. Sometime I got the information from different vendors, what we are getting from NASA, the solar radiation, when it has come to the actual, it happened in the wind also, we are not getting that level. Then people are saying, this is not, we are getting P90 because this is the worst two, three years going on. I don't know. After 10 years, what we will say? Okay, first one or two years, we can say these are the worst period of 25 years. But what after five years or 10 years? So one is the solar radiation, which is not in our control, and how the environment like pollution, dust, and all global warming is taking place, how it have impact on solar and wind, I don't know. Nobody knows. We have to see. Second thing, when I'm saying to the regulator, regulator is also coming at a different, like some state is saying some values. Now, okay, this year CRC have not come out with the solar and wind. They have given only the guideline because they are, last year, if you see, they are saying 565, within seven days, bid is taking place at below four rupees. So I don't know what rationale they are doing it. So now we have to see how the regulators are doing because suddenly now you have the, for wind or uh, regulated price of solar, suddenly after this wind bid, a uh, solar bid, all government stopped. Like in Tamil Nadu, you see, two years back they are buying at seven rupees, 7.01. Now what? So. From regulator point of view, they also need the long viewpoint. So what will be the five year, 10 year period? Because if we are not doing the rational thinking, next government they, or any 
next person will come in that chair, either in government or in DISCOM or bank or in IPP. They will ask this question. And what this is, this decision has been taken. And then all these contractual dispute may be created. Because I'm coming from the power sector from last 30 years. I have seen how the naphtha based project come in this country, how the gas based project come in this country, later this uh, hydro projects, then solar, water, we told already 25, 30,000 megawatt are lying. Uh, and uh, I don't know how many people are from here, but in thermal, you know, the lowest thermal bit took place at 0.81 rupees per kilowatt in Bhayathan. That project never come up. So all those are from the old people like me. We are just thinking how this, because today it is a yes, good period that solar prices are coming down. But if you are saying that in last 12 months, 30% solar panel cost reduced, and you are assuming another extrapolation that another 12 month, 30% price will again go back, uh, reduce, it is not possible. Like I'm saying in the month of October, July, August, September, the rains was 100 centimeter in my city. Is in October, November, December, again 100 centimeter rainfall will be there? No. So we have to see what is our rational thinking. Because, yes, the, somebody told that panel is the major part, but again, there is cement, there is steel, copper, those prices will not come down due to because it will be used for the green project or something. So we have to see how the component. And one more thing, like uh, in recent bid, I discussed with few people how they are taking the old name. Because last year CRC told for solar project it is seven lakh per megawatt. But when people are putting in the bid, they are putting two lakh or two point five lakh. We are seriously discussing in our internal team how the one name escalation will take place in 25 years. This 5.72, how is it sustainable or not? Because in India, his salary is coming from the very low base. And as time will go, it is my opinion that what is the service component, what is the labor component, it will have a higher component. Like all are sitting here, if they are all employed, you know, we ourselves getting more than 10% escalation in salary. And the promotion is something, it is a different issue. So, but when I am taking 10% in my salary, but when it is coming to the financial model, I am taking only 5.72%. How it is sustainable, how it is rational. So we have to see after 10, 20 years, how the operational base price is sustainable or not. So, Many things already told by the, my co-speakers, and uh, I would stop here and see all stakeholders, including IPP, bankers, uh, policy makers, government, and uh, everybody has to see it is sustainable. Sustainability will come only when you have the long-term rational views. So I will stop here, and thanks again to the EQ. Thank you, Ankar. I guess he speaks for a lot of us right now. And uh, again, the theme of this conference, how technology can safeguard some of the aggressive challenges we are taking moving forward, I think is very, very relevant. So thank you, Ankar. I'll now invite Gagan Paul, C CMO Adani Mundra, please. Good morning once again to everyone. Uh, in fact, it's a pleasure to be here because uh, the way that the biddings have happened, such kind of forums always give us various inputs, which in the vicinities of our respective rooms or uh, conference rooms where we do decide and calculate the kind of tariffs that are supposed to be looked at and uh, bid probably are much different uh, from the perspectives that we have in that room and plus when we go out and listen to these things out here in such places. 
so uh, just to bring out uh, and maybe summarize those kind of different uh, directions which probably are looked at and then thought and uh, assimilated together to bring out such kind of perspectives and then maybe they are uh, irrational bits maybe they are forward looking maybe they are punts maybe they are uh, like uh, more relying on the technologies which probably some of us have access to some of us don't have access to but uh, overall i think uh, the uh, summation of all these things is today uh, and we speak in different languages but then we all come together uh, when we reach a point of inflection saying that you know probably what i thought was wrong somebody else maybe you know he thought something differently or maybe he is wrong and probably what i thought is right and we don't know what will come out and all these different question marks are coming uh, and raising a lot of question marks on what the direction will be in the future and plus all these ambiguities about you know we listen to gst is the government also playing its own part either spoil sport or you know in its own way trying to incentivize or disincentivize so many things coming in together uh looking and coming together to talk about the developers perspective on uh, uh, the technologies as well as on the solar part as how it will come out probably i'll try and summarize these in 5s kind of uh, concept and these 5s is uh, probably a simplistic way to bring about how things are phasing and uh, uh, coming in together so the 5s that i have thought about is that i don't know um we are talking about the developers perspective bringing in uh, trying to have the tug of war between as a bids churn out uh, so the first s that is questioned by you know us and uh, on the other side the government as well as the institutions as well as the customers is how safe are we in stretching our boundaries to the place that we are going to in terms of uh, did some you know we heard about people saying that about 5 years ago 7 years ago we were building taj mahals now are we today uh, saying that taj mahals were necessary and today whatever we are doing is not necessary so are we on that breach are we on that wall where we are compromising safety and that's why we are on this part not saying that it was taj or not taj but are we breaching those safe limits or the safety norms somewhere compromising on those thin lines second s that we and i'm trying to bring this 5s perspectives just to think and say uh, the questions that are again you know talked about in those uh, little forums are we properly looking at the value to serve and the quality to serve that means in terms of service we heard uh, you know that perspective also being called on uh, the escalations that are thought of the services that are desired to be offered for such plants so that they maintain they are maintained in that long uh, service uh, periods that they are desired to deliver another is that comes in in terms of sustenance and that sustenance is not only in terms of the plant being robust enough to survive that 25 years of lifetime but sustenance also from a developer's perspective that is it going to be sustain enough or is it going to drive uh, the monies back to you and be able to sustain not only you in the short term but if it is required to be flipped over if it is required to be uh, given to uh, the investors etc is it sustenance uh, is sustenance driven and uh, impregnated into it that it is able to have that kind of 25 year time period uh, the fourth s that i thought is uh, very pertinent and i'm trying to bring these points in a very short perspective rather than elaborating in the uh, benefit of you know giving time to uh, so many other things that are also stretched in is uh, is the uh, structure around what we are bidding around is it simple enough simple in the sense that a developer today has to probably have a battery of lawyers or a battery of consultants because there are so many states that are involved there are so many laws that are involved there are so many uh interactions that are required to come to finally understand and have different perspectives on whether this law will be applicable whether this particular attitude this particular uh direction will be applicable to what we are trying to do so it's not simple enough it's very very complicated and when we want to go to those 30 gigawatt 50 gigawatt 100 gigawatt kind of thing the more simpler these norms are uh, in terms of interacting the central state 
the DERCs, the CERCs, the DISCOMs, distribution companies, etc. Only then this perspective and this large scale tug of war can be a winner for everyone there. Uh, maybe the final S that uh, we were thinking of is, uh, is it secure enough? From a developer's perspective, uh, we bid, we come out with a certain uh, kind of a winning formula, we think we have won, but how secure is it? Is it secure enough in terms of, is it watertight enough in terms of a contract? There are challenges that, and we've heard of those challenges in the past that, you know, for example, a state a PPA is signed and then after some years people wake up, no, that was, uh, you know, probably too high a PPA that we had signed. Uh, are you ready to renegotiate? So are we secure enough uh, in terms of uh, not only water tightness with respect to a developer, but also with respect to the end customer also? We are again trying to link this to the kind of uh, change in laws that may emanate now with the GSTs coming in. So how secure we are, how, uh, uh, how confident we are that whatever we are putting in as a money is really going to be secure from a fund perspective or an investor perspective. So uh, there shouldn't be any ambiguities in the long term, only then these kind of things may, may then, uh, I think, sequel uh, with the next bid coming in with not, I would say, sensible or non-sensible or, you know, in that sense, rational or uh, not rational. But I think a lot of mind will need to go into all such things coming in together. So with that, I'll just uh, leave uh, these thoughts with all of you. And thank you all for uh, being so patient and uh, encouraging enough and to bring in so many perspectives together. This is always helpful to share such thoughts together. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gagan, for those five S's. And generally, um, in this industry, we all, if you talk, as he says, and you exchange views, everybody's trying to create a portfolio or do something and exit. Okay. Now, somebody has to buy. You know, and, and, and that question, I, I don't know, some forums will have to ask. Um, the, you know, your value is what the customer is willing to pay, not is what is in your head. Okay, so I think we have to be very, very cautious that I think we are projecting and putting a value to some of the things we are doing. And as time passes on, that value has to match what the customer or the next guy is willing to pay. And uh, unfortunately, for the last eight, nine, ten months, we haven't seen that value in the market. So we need to be, I think, responsible moving forward and assess in some of those rooms, as you said, that what value are we putting? Is it a safe or a reliable number which somebody is going to pay me so that what I do today gets paid for? So just a minor reflection in the mirror, which is important. I'll now request Kailash Vaswani, his deputy CFO, Renew Power, please. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Um, so, yeah, I'm representing Renew Power over here in this session to just give developers perspective. As being the deputy CFO, obviously, for me, uh, managing risk is uh, obviously one of the key, you know, result areas uh, from my perspective. And, uh, you know, that's where obviously we worry a lot about, you know, what's happening in the world of technology, what's happening to module quality, uh, whether these panels will, loss, will last uh, 20, 25 years as is being claimed, uh, what is the value behind all these warranties and so to say. So obviously we've had a very healthy discussion on most of these topics. And, uh, you know, from our perspective, I'll just try to, you know, enlighten, uh, you know, what we try to do to, uh, you know, manage some of these risks. Obviously, you know, we cannot mitigate them completely, but that's where, you know, you will have to sort of, uh, you know, take judicious calls on how to manage them. Uh, so, you know, from the module side, you know, we obviously get these warranties uh, from our suppliers and, uh, you know, we all know that, you know, because these are 25 year long warranties, uh, some of these suppliers may not be around for that long a period. So obviously then, you know, there are insurance products which are available. 
you know we did explore the option of buying insurance uh, you know from some of these uh, on some of these modules uh, but the cost benefit analysis and and sort of the fine print uh, just did not give us any comfort that you know if there was any time a problem uh, you know we would be able to claim anything under that so you know we did not actually end up taking any of uh, those uh, insurances what we have tried to do is that uh, you know we have taken uh, a comprehensive insurance uh, locally in india uh, which essentially cover the risk that you know in case a supply was to go bankrupt and in that scenario you know we may have uh, you know some claim from our insurance company to the extent obviously there is a problem so you know these are some of the steps that you know we're taking but obviously this uh, risk still has to be managed much better and i'm sure there will be uh, more products which will be available uh, which will give us that uh, comfort and confidence uh, you know to invest in in these uh, modules so to say uh, the other aspect uh, you know which we worry a lot about is on the financing side and uh, there again uh, you know the trend that you know we've seen in infrastructure today is that you know there are road projects where the off taker is nhai uh, you know the uh, debt uh, which is borrowed for those sort of projects typically gets a triple a sort of a rating uh, because the off taker quality is very nice uh, at the same time even for uh, transmission projects uh, there again uh, you know what we tend to see is that uh you know because pgci is the off taker uh, again the you know rating on some of those projects is triple a but renewable energy projects you know we haven't seen that uh, so obviously you know we did uh, especially for ntpc or secchi type of projects now obviously we've worked a lot with rating agencies uh, you know we've met them and we've tried to convince them that you know this is a similar sort of a risk where you know the off take is completely taken care of and as far as the a uh, project is concerned uh, you know the ability to forecast uh, the generation uh, you know the uh, you know the availability of all these databases you know which have long term you know satellite information meter norm 7 9 whatever else is there uh, however you know we have not been able to convince them on one aspect which is the technology side uh, which is whether these modules will actually last for 25 years so that is one area uh, which has sort of uh, you know constrained our ability Uh, to get a better rating and hence better financing terms for some of these ntpc secchi type projects also uh, and that is an area you know which you know we will have to you know as an industry you know try to come up and address uh, you know how we can sort of mitigate that risk you know maybe you know few years the track record is established maybe there is a stronger uh, you know insurance available and and that's how you know we'll try to sort of address that so with that i'll just end this session thanks well as a very valid long term sustaining and positioning of this industry these points uh, make for a uh, some very good discussion uh, we also need to acknowledge just adding kailas uh, is that um, wind of late and some of the situations we are seeing in uh, pp is getting you know already people have put projects and you are forcing pp is to go down to some of the last bids we saw some rumblings uh, gunl in gujarat a uh, year and a half back that litigation still continues they, they, they send very wrong signals uh, the care, you know agencies are professional hard nosed people okay but even otherwise uh, these do reflect Uh, the the quality of sovereignty uh, commitments and we need to i think work with the, our job is to work with the government uh, and with the agencies uh, to give this industry a platform which it uh, really deserves so very very valid points here